Hi, welcome to the Interaxis YouTube channel, Interaxis.io. Uh, we've been uh, going into some of the topics recently, like smart contracts and oracles and such, um, trying to lead into what some of the risks are of decentralized finance. Uh, part of the reason is because we, we sing the praises and, there, and there's so much going on about how great it will be, how, how great it is for the world and the economy and everything. And we've even done that, talked about uh, how, how incredible this technology is and, and how important it can be. But what we really want to delve into right now is some of the risks that, that you might face right now getting into DeFi, uh, putting your money into it, and, and hopefully how some of those risks are, are being addressed in the future. So uh, the way I, I thought we would separate these is you have the um, you have your financial risks, you have your technical risks, and you have your human risks, right? So from a financial perspective, some of the the risks you might have are look if I if I buy uh, ETH. No matter what type of in investment I have, this ETH is is subject to supply and demand, right? It's subject to whatever the market has decided, whatever everyone else who's trading it has decided it's worth. So if I buy it at two hundred dollars and it drops to one hundred and fifty, I've lost my fifty dollars. There's not much I can do about that if I haven't sold in the meantime. So I have the typical financial risks that I have with any sort of investment. Okay, it doesn't change because it, it is decentralized. Uh, another part of the, the financial risk here is what we're doing is we're, we're taking in some instruments and we are, we, we are denoting them in some other cryptocurrency and then we might be using that. So an example is I might take my ETH and, and I might turn it into DAI, right? So I might have, you know, 300 DAI, which ideally is worth $300, right? That's the, the goal is for this to be worth $300, right? So I might take this 300 die and put it into a compound loan earning me, you know, currently say 5%, right? So at the end of one year, I have 315 die. And ideally, I want that to be worth three hundred and fifteen dollars. That was the whole point of it. But let's say something happens, you know, with the price of ETH or with or with Maker, with the new multi collateral die. Something happens, and die is now only worth eighty cents instead of a dollar. My three hundred and fifteen die is only worth two hundred and fifty two dollars. So by doing this, by earning five percent die, I have more die than I had to start with, right? But it's worth less than it was. This is just a financial issue. Some of this might be due to the incentive structure of Maker. It, it might just be due to some collapse in ETH. We don't know. But, but the, the point is um, the price of ETH or whatever other collateral is being used for, for multi-collateral die right now, whatever it might be, is actually determining the price of DAI in, in some way, shape, or form. And if the incentive structure gets thrown off, if the code gets thrown off somewhere and people start gaming the system and maybe get the price of, of DAI down to 80 cents for their own personal gain, right? And that, that goes into some of the human issues. But if they do that for their own personal gain, the problem is you, you, you have this system where the value of what you thought was worth a dollar is now worth less. It might be worth 80 cents. Now, it, the same thing might happen. There might be some issue and it goes up to a dollar 20, in which case you not only have 315 died, but now this is worth more than 315 dollars. So you could have the same situation the other way. But that's a risk we take because we're dealing with cryptocurrency. It's not backed by a government or a bank or anything like that. It's just backed by code and it's backed by trust that we have in each other. Uh, the problem is the each other that we also have to have trust in is just humans that that react rationally and rationally sometimes means they're trying to profit for themselves. Okay, so that's some of the financial issues. The biggest one is you could lose your money because the value goes down. It's no different than, than any other financial transaction, any other investment. I could invest in Apple stock and it goes down. I could invest in the S&P 500, the Dow real estate, whatever it might be, and the value can go down. I have to understand what the value is, where it derives its value, and be willing to take that risk and understand what those risks are. Just because die 
or USDC or whatever is ideally uh, pegged to a dollar doesn't mean it's always pegged to a dollar. Okay, just because ETH is worth $200 today doesn't mean it will be worth tomorrow. It could literally go to zero. It could go to $1, it could go to $5. Bitcoin could go down to $10. It's been there before. Okay, so you can lose your money and, and you can do it very quickly because there isn't as much liquidity. There, is not, there are not as many people in the world ready to pick the price back up when it starts to fall. Now, it's much better than it was a few years ago right when there were very few people invested in cryptocurrency there have been so many more people that have come into the market and invested so much more money that if the price of eth starts to fall there are more people here that are willing to to come in and pick it back up there are more interested parties but that doesn't mean that there's that there are guarantees that it's going to be picked back up so you have the the financial uh risks there that, that are the a lot of the same financial risks you have with any uh, investments, right? Then you have the technical risks. A lot of what we're doing involves smart contracts, blockchain, code, etc. Et right? ETH itself is, is just code. Um, it, Ethereum is just uh, code. It's, it's a chain, right? The smart contracts we're using to invest. Compound involves smart contracts. Um, Uniswap, Kyber, anything like that involves smart contracts, right? So what I'm doing is I'm taking my DAI or my ETH or some sort of crypto, right? We'll call it DAI for this, and I'm wrapping it in some sort of smart contract in a lot of these situations. I'm wrapping it in some sort of smart contract. And when I do that, I, I'm subjecting myself to whatever this code is. Now, code is, is written by humans and it's potentially fallible, right? It can be hacked. It might have... Um, it might have vulnerabilities and someone might exploit those vulnerabilities. So if I put my, my DAI or my ETH or whatever into some sort of smart contract with the idea that it's going to be exchanged for some other cryptocurrency or something and someone figures out a way to exploit this smart contract and take my DAI out and send it to their wallet, I'm probably never going to see it again. There are no repercussions or invocations or anything else like that. Once it gets to someone else's wallet, it's gone. So I have some smart contract risk here. Another risk I might have is, is that of the oracles, right? And the oracle risk can, can somewhat be uh, code. Uh, technical base, it can somewhat be human base, whatever. But let's say that, that I'm involved in some sort of smart contract, right, where I get liquidated. So uh, I, I have ETH at $200, for instance, and let's say I get liquidated if ETH falls below $125. And let's just say, for argument's sake, that the oracle I'm using for this is the Kraken exchange. Right. Now, it has happened in the past where there can be, let's say, one trade or two trades down here at like $122. ETH can be going around here at like $180, and there's one or two trades that execute at like $122. Well, that sets off a flurry of activity, right? Because that means anyone who had sell orders in here gets liquidated. Whatever smart contract I was in here might get liquidated, and all of a sudden, my ETH gets sent back to me that whatever smart contract I was in gets liquidated, I might have ETH that then might get executed and sold at like $130. And I, I might lose $70 per ETH just because the Oracle I was using had one bad trade, but that's what triggered it. Now, it might be someone gaming the system and figuring it out. Okay, if I execute one trade on Kraken at 122, it's going to liquidate all these other smart contracts, and therefore I'm going to position myself on the other side to make money. Okay, but what, what we have to watch out for, and there are companies that are taking care, you know, helping to take care of this, is what oracles are we using and what can go wrong within that oracle to cause some other issue within a smart contract or, or the code. Because again, when I outsource all my trust, and, or almost all my trust to code, I have to deal with the consequences. And the consequences are there's no 800 number to call and say, hey, give me my money back. All right, there's, there's no getting your money back at this point. Once, once this code has executed, that's the beauty of smart contracts is they're self-executing. The problem with smart contracts is they're self-executing and there's, there's no way to, to really reverse it. 
Okay, so that's some of the technical issues. I know there are a lot more, but these are some of the major ones. Then you have the human issues, right? This is things like I can, if I have everything stored on my phone and I get SIM swapped, right? That means someone basically steals the, the SIM information from my phone and therefore has the, the ability to get into my, my uh, soft wallets and such and, and can go send themselves Bitcoin or send themselves Ether, right? I might uh, lose my keys, my private keys, right? That's a big deal. Hopefully with more, you know, people are getting more involved with multi-sig wallets and such, where if you lose your keys, someone else might have it. You, you have your, uh, your seed phrase, right? Although I, I saw recently there was a, a vault, a custodian or, or a vault that was launched, a wallet that was launched that actually has you using your phone to take a picture of your seed phrase, which is, uh, in my estimation, a horrible, horrible idea to have your seed phrase on your phone that can easily get SIM swapped. And obviously someone's going to take that seed phrase, take your wallet and do whatever they want with your cryptocurrency because you, you've just lost it, right? If you don't have your keys, if you don't have your seed phrase, not your money anymore. Um, you can forget your keys. You can forget your seed phrase. If you have a hard wallet, you might lose that. And if there's no backup, there's no backup, right? So you have all sorts of human issues. If you accidentally give someone your private key instead of your public key, you, you have those issues. So you have all the human issues that are involved, uh, again, with any sort of investment. Just like if I give out my username and password to my bank account, or I lose it, or someone, um, or, or I get malware on my computer and some keylogger figures out my username and password, it's, it's those same type of issues. The difference is when there's a bank involved, when there's centralization involved, I can usually call and say, hey, someone stole my money, and the bank will usually make me whole. They'll investigate a little bit and they'll make me whole. Same way if, if someone uh, steals a, a check out of the mail from me, which I've had this happen, stole a check out of the mail, basically ended up writing it to themselves, and I had to call the bank. They did a little investigation and they put the money back in my account, right? When we're talking about decentralized finance, we can't always do that. Now, these are some, some of the many risks that are involved in a very, very new technology that's growing extremely quickly. All these people all over the world are putting this code together to build on top of each other, and it hasn't all been stress tested yet. So we want to be very cognizant, not put too much of our money in any one smart contract or any one wallet or such. If you really want to invest a good deal of money or money you can't lose, then ideally you just do something like potentially buy Bitcoin or buy Ether. Again, I'm not giving investment advice. I'm not telling you to do it. If you want to and you want to buy Bitcoin or Ether or something, then you go to some sort of qualified crypto custodian um, like a, a Coinbase Custody or, or Gemini or Curve or, or, or one of those that actually has insurance to where if they get hacked or someone somehow steals your crypto out of it, they have a record of it and they will probably make you whole because they have insurance behind them. Okay, but if you want to partake in some of the decentralized finance, the the uh, stacking hedges on top of each other, the, the loaning, the lending, anything like that, then you really need to watch yourself and you really need to understand what your risks are and, and how to mitigate those. Now, for some things like technical smart contract risks, there are, uh, there's Nexus Mutual, Ether Risk, people actually building um, mutual insurance to cover a lot of these smart contract risks. Um, for you know, the, the human issues, there, there's obviously things like you know, try not to store everything on your phone. Don't store your private key on your phones uh, or, or any place where it can get lost or stolen or, or anything like that. But, but it's so hard to uh, look at all the different ways you could lose your private keys or lose your seed phrases and think about all those. Um, so you, you just really have to be cognizant of how you're storing things and understand that once cryptocurrency is gone from your wallet, it is gone. And there's really no way to get it back. Again, there's no 800 number you can call. There's no one you can complain to. It is out there. And part of outsourcing our trust to code is we're outsourcing everything to the code and, and to each other. And part of these smart contracts, some of the, the, the insurance, some of the other uh, protocols that are being built is they are trying so hard to create incentive structures to get people to actually act um, in a positive way and not in a negative way. They're trying to disincentivize 
bad actors are trying to disincentivize people trying to game this system for their own profit but it's just so hard because those that would be malicious are so good at it they're so good at understanding the game theory and figuring out how to game the different incentive structures crypto structures token offering structures to make themselves a profit and potentially you know if it's a zero sum game potentially lose your profit or lose your money okay so we really have to be cognizant and watch out i love trying all this i i love putting a little bit of money in all these different things but i know that i could lose it all at any moment and i'm i'm okay with that so the goal is don't don't put too much in that, that you can't afford to lose keep track you know somehow keep track of of what you're doing where your funds are how you're able to watch them Make sure that, that you're diligent about your, you know, your phone, your SIM card, what's on your phone. Don't take pictures of things like your seed phrases. Don't write them down on your phone. Keep, keep them safe somewhere. Make sure someone in your family maybe knows about them. Um, from a financial perspective, make sure that it's money you can afford to lose. Smart contracts, if you can get some sort of smart contract insurance, I would highly recommend it because why not? If you're willing to, to go do this and outsource your trust to this code, you're probably willing to outsource some of the insurance to the, the code also. So those are some of the risks that, that we're seeing in decentralized finance. Again, it's growing so fast and so many teams around the world are, are putting things together quickly that not everything can be audited. Not everything can be stress tested yet. And so as we're using it, we're actually testing it more and more and more. And eventually we'll get to that stress testing and th there will be more um, parachutes in place. There'll be more safeties put in place uh, as much as we can to help us with some of these risks. But for the time being, there's a lot of risk involved. It is still cryptocurrency. It's still uh, in very much its infancy. And we, we just have to watch out for ourselves. So as great as it can be and as much as we, we talk about how incredible and how life-changing decentralized finance and cryptocurrency can be, there are still some risks that you need to watch out for. So hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, check us out our website, interaxis.io, which we're revamping right now. Twitter, at interaxis8, the number eight. Uh, let us know if you like the videos, if there's anything else you want to see, and uh, we'll see you soon.